Lock them out and bar the door. Lock them out forevermore. Nook and cranny, window, door. Seal them out forevermore. Curse go back. Curse go back. Back with double beer and black. Curse go back. Curse go back. Back with double pain and lack. Silver arrow through the night. Silver arrow take thy flight. Silver arrow seek and find. Cursing heart and cursing mind. practice of witchcraft has plagued man on this planet since he first used words. In the beginning was the word. This is how the Persians pictured the origins of disease. Artists of antiquity illustrated the evil spirits of sorcery and magic, tracing these apparently indelible shadows in images which fit easily into primitive conceptions of the mystical world. Here, according to Maspero, is how the ancient Egyptians pictured the shape of the globe. Earth and water were surrounded by high mountains. The Egyptians imagined an iron sky held up by pillars fixed into the mountains. The stars were suspended from the sky on solid cords. Others believed the sky was curved and the earth made up of terraces. In the Middle Ages, evil spirits of antiquity were transformed into demons, prowling about everywhere to tempt mankind. The demons dwelt in the innermost parts of the earth. The globe and its waters were seen as the center of the universe. Outside this, the Middle Ages postulated first a layer of air, then a layer of fire. Beyond this layer of fire moved the planets. Each planet was fixed in its sphere, which was mobile and transparent. Beyond the planets, the stars were attached to another sky. In the outermost circle, Almighty God was enthroned, surrounded by nine angelic choirs. And it was God who controlled the world machinery. In the bowels of the earth was hell and its eternal torments, one of which was to find yourself being put into a boiling cauldron. Here, one of the damned is thrown directly into the fire. Here's a demon giving one of the damned a drink of horrid brimstone liquid. This scene gives an accurate picture of the conceptions of the Middle Ages. 
Look at these two demons stoking the fire so energetically beneath the cauldron. People were convinced then that the witches had made an unlawful contract with Satan and for this deed deserved the stake. These two German illustrations show a greedy witch obtaining milk by squeezing an ax handle, whilst another old biddy has maliciously cast a spell on a man's shoes. It was the witch's custom to hold counsel among themselves. Then they hastened to bewitch a cow so it would yield no more milk. Here, a sorcerer and a witch set fire to a village with a magic spell. Witches were also believed capable of healing the sick with powders and magic brews. When the witch celebrated the Sabbath at night with the demons, she was stark naked. Women who wanted to take part in these ceremonies made secret visits to the witches where the old hags rubbed their backs with magic ointment. Thanks to this procedure, they could fly to the Sabbath on broomsticks. At the Sabbath, their first duty was to profane the sacred symbol of the cross. Satan gives each participant a special name. Next, a solemn feast takes place. Decaying corpses from the gallows usually made up the main course. All the witches had to show their respect for Satan by kissing his ass. After an erotic caper with the demons, these women of the damned return home at first cockcrow. Famous engravings from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance show you how. Thousands of women declared that they had taken part in these mysterious meetings and diabolical gatherings.
It's midnight in a little town in the Middle Ages. Such is the Middle Ages. The devil's deeds run rampant. devil was so steadfast, in fact, that many people declared they had seen and touched him in person, giving incredible descriptions of this horrid individual. In a nightmare, as a seductive suitor, Satan assumes many forms. He has been seen as a prince, a peasant, a friar, a dog, a pebble, a pitchfork, but, as legend has it, never as a fount of holy water. Satan's friend can be wonderfully young and beautiful, but she is usually wretched, old, poor, and dirty.
after the curfew bell is rung and all the lights are out, Satan comes looking for Apollon to escort her to the night's foul happening. in the celestial hell is the castle of Apollon, and there Satan gratifies his unspeakable secret desires. France, Meinmann's book, Judges and Judgments, you can see these engravings showing the judges of witches carrying out their duties. To find out if the witch is guilty, she is made to undergo the water truth. Here the witch is tied up. Then they take her to the deepest spot. If she floats, she is burned at the stake. And if she sinks, the judges thank God for her innocence. You're now going to see a witch hunt during the period when the Pope had dispatched judges through all Christendom, specialized in witch hunting.
youngest officer of the Inquisition must not exchange one word with a woman. is dressed in purified clothes. spend their nights as the judges see fit. Two men try to make her confess. Now watch. This is the tough cop and the con cop technique, still used in police stations of the world. If the woman persists in denial, they resort to religious methods. Then, if she is still obstinate, they throw her into the torture chamber, but from behind, so that she cannot cast a spell on the judges.
the machinery of the law was set in motion. Every tortured witch denounced another dozen, and the soldiers in the town were seldom idle. Anyone who hindered the arrest of a witch was considered an accomplice. Thus, the fate of young Anna, Jess Billerilliam's wife, was settled. Only two members of Jess Billerilliam's unfortunate household now remain.
Anna has been arrested, and the judges have made her undergo the usual treatment for confessions. Suppose the young woman resists and that no menace, no torture will make her confess. How did the judges react?
that's how they'll burn you too, young woman, in honor of God and as a lesson to others. After setting up stake after stake and cleaning out all the witches in town, the judges move on to the next, bearing the good tidings. They do their work and go. Like a mental epidemic, the madness of witchcraft spreads wherever these judges settle down. In two centuries, eight million victims were burned alive at the stake for the crime of witchcraft. The accounts given by the witches are so precise that they satisfy the most exacting judges. Thus, numerous women confessed that they had changed themselves into cats and at nightfall polluted the altar, while two demons in animal form kept watch at the church door. Some women were burned at the stake after being accused of bewitching conjugal beds by making knots. Each knot would prevent a pregnancy. It was the magic knot of impotence, the dreaded conjugal evil. With the help of a witch's hair and a metallic cross, all the happiness of a home could be destroyed once and for all. To understand clearly the confessions of the witches, take a look at the instruments of torture that were used. There's little doubt that any one of us would confess incredible things with the help of such arguments. The French doctor, Paul Reignard, describes the way in which this very special collar was used. It is held by four tightly stretched cords. The wrists and ankles of the victim are fastened to two iron bars. A blazing basin is brought in. This engraving is entitled, After the Interrogation. At the start of the questioning, a light torture was used. The thumb screw, for example. In the majority of convents in the Middle Ages, fear of the devil reached hysteria. The nuns took to flagellation and to mortification. When one of the sisters was afflicted with infernal visions, the whole convent would soon fall prey to this madness. Raving mystical lunacy, enigmatic and contagious madness, leading to excesses of sacrilegious and erotic behavior. In accounts which are still preserved, these women have told with striking simplicity how the devil penetrated the convent. God knows what horrible delusions these women went through before they were invaded by madness. They confessed in despair. We were provoked by the devil.
now pass to present time, 1920. The majority of witches in former times were poor old women, like the ones that are now sent to homes for the aged and charity institutions. Thus, many women were accused of witchcraft only because of their appearance or physical deformity. And today, as of old, they are the first to believe in the devil. The old woman who plays Mary the seamstress in this movie lifted up her weary head one day and said, the devil exists. I saw him one evening sitting on the edge of my bed. This little book belonged to her and it shows how the devil can be recognized. The madness of witchcraft is closely related to certain psychopathic states encountered in neuropsychiatry. In the following scenes, the same actress plays the role of several mentally disturbed patients, all of the same type. This young hypersensitive girl is a sleepwalker. During her sleep, this woman does the thing she fears most. Like the witch provoked by the devil, this young woman was forced, asleep or awake, to yield to an enigmatic desire to light matches. Is this idea related to her morbid terror of fire from which she has suffered agonies since her house was burned down one night? She explains that she feels a struggle with an extraneous will stronger than her own. Is there not a certain affinity between the witch and this sleepwalker who wanders at night through the sleeping house? Doesn't she remind us of the nun who, provoked by the devil, caused a revolution in the convent? This unfortunate woman does in her sleep that which, in a waking state, she fears most of all. These states fall into the category of psychic illness we call hysteria today. Remember the witch who was visited by the devil at night the hysteric nowadays is not visited by the devil, but sometimes by an artist, a fashionable religious teacher, or by a famous doctor who comes to disturb the peace of her dreams. Derek always asserts that her visitors entered through the window or by passing through the wall. Notice how this unconscious woman clings to the bed. Among the real sufferings of the hysteric, there are more than a few pretenses. The Middle Ages believed that during the Sabbath, the devil marked the witch's naked body with spots in order to make it numb. In fact, the torturer often found insensitive and numb spots on the back of the accused. Today, this curious insensitivity is known as one of the symptoms of hysteria.
afflicted young woman, in the Middle Ages, you were exposed to the harshness of the church, and now you are in the grip of civic law. With the passing centuries, the god of the Middle Ages is no longer in his circle, surrounded by nine angelic choirs. We no longer prostrate ourselves in agony in front of the pictures on church walls. The witch no longer rides to the Sabbath on her broomstick. But is not superstition still rife among us? Is there such a difference between the witch of yesteryear and the clairvoyant of today? We don't burn old women today, but aren't they wretched in a different way? And the hysterical woman with the strange behavior isn't she still something of an enigma to us? Nowadays, we can find such women to the lunatic asylum, or, if the woman be rich, into a modern clinic with her. And there, the therapeutic shower has replaced the tortures of former times. But the enigma of the devil remains, and will, no doubt, remain unsolved until the death of the last man, or woman. <laughs>